I'll just demonstrate a couple of those things very quickly. Um, one is the visualizer tool. You can see here we have, we have two um, tasks offered. Each, each, each to some people there. If you go to the work queue, you can see oh, this user who is also an admin user has been offered these two tasks. And we've also enabled the visualizer tool, which you can see uh, there. It's uh, turned on through with the config files for the resource service. And if you click on that with a bit of luck, we can see the visual visualizer tool. But anyway, the tool, the tool works in the workers. You press the return button and you can go back to the standard work list again. Um, as an example of... Uh, I'll as an example of the message you get when you load um, some uninitialized variables in the specification. They're giving, giving us two warning conditions. This specification has um, two variables in it. One's a string variable and one's a, uh, a number, a numeric, an in, in integer. And it's telling us here that um, in, in the net there's a local variable called name which refers to a uh, an empty string, or it contains an empty string at the moment, but when the mapping cons, uh, occurs, it will still contain an empty string via this path. Whereas it also contains a number, and the, the message for the numbers are a little bit different because an empty string is a, still a, a, a valid string at runtime, and so the, um, the specification won't fail, but for a, for a number it will because a uh, empty number value is not, is not, is not a, a valid value. So it says the amount will be uninitialized when it gets to the review task. Please assign initial variables to the store. Now it's shown as a warning rather than an error because sometimes it can give you false positives. So sometimes it can say it won't be, in, be initialized but based on some complex control flow that may be from another part of the net. So it's still let me um, load it. When I try to uh, mm -hmm. <coughs> there it is there. So so I've started, I've started that, uh, that work, um, that specification. There's its task there. I actually try and start it. It will, it will fail because the numeric value, as the message told us, wouldn't, um, uh, didn't have a value associated with it when the mapping took place. You can see there another you know, change to 2.1 is also the, the way the messages are displayed on the form, whereas 2.0 they are displayed at the bottom of the screen. Uh, now they're displayed in the dialogue in the centre of the form itself. Makes it a little bit easier to see. Um, all the data field, you can now choose a, uh, a, a role or a capability or whatever there. And this name shows up in the field down here, the form which you can change the name. Save that. The name of, name of that role gets changed, even though the role itself and all of its members remain the same. The other thing that's new in, uh, in 2.1 two, in 2 is when you choose a role there, it will show you who are the members of that role. Uh, that's, a, that, that's an addition to this, to this version. And the same for the other, for the other fields. So you can see, you can see there who's got, bat, who's got bachelors and who's got masters. Um, right, so we'll start the model of the service. Well, actually, I'm not sure we do that. 
just add a few more places. The service. You can see I can use the same user ID and password that the resource service knows about. To log on to the monitor service. So any administrator uh, that's registered with the resource service can open up the monitor service. And here you can see all of our all of our specs that are running, all of our current cases, some information about the last engine start time. Um, you choose one of those. Here we can see what uh, work items are currently running for that case. You can see where the case started. You can see who started it, which service started it. In this case, it's the resource service, aka the default work list. Who started it, and then the case started it was, a, it was available for that particular item. And because it's, it's only enabled, we can't, we can't uh, drill down. Um, Let's create purchase order from the uh, order fulfillment example. And here it's, you can see its case data is, is uh, not initialized yet um, because we haven't actually started that work on right yet. So I'll log out of there and go back to the uh, resource service again quickly. Start one of these. I'm going to assign that to myself and start it. Then we go back to the monitor service again. See this one's now ex executing. The service started it, and when it actually started, we click on that. So you can see the whole mass of data down here. About its input variables for that work item, uh, what data types they are, the full data type of each work item, so where it's a complex type. You can see its full definition there, what its uh, input predicate was. Here we've got a very complex input predicate. Here we've got a basic X query. Uh, what its output predicates are, and what its original value was on the way in. And in, in the default value of what I had, and its current value. So as, you know, since we haven't changed anything yet, those two match. But as time goes on, those things will change. You can also see at the top here, we can see all of the engine log events for this work item. So when it was in. When it was enabled, when it was fired, when it was executing, when the data value changed when it, the input data was mapped to it. You can see here all of the offers that this work item that people were offered to, and who, and who actually started it. So you can see it's quite basic information, but it's quite useful information uh, as well. That's the one of the service. Um, very quickly, I just want to show you the, uh, the uh, editor as well. Just a couple of things in the editor. Now, one thing that's new in the editor is that you can set external file paths for all of the things that used to have fixed file paths. So things like we will we put extended attributes file for it at the decomposition level. So if you have any user-defined extended attributes, they used to have had to be in a particular subdirectory of the place where the editor was uh, installed. Same for uh, the variable level extended attributes, same for the, any task icons you want to add. Same for the analysis file for Wolfyow. 
and um, in two part one do process configuration or Wendy uh, process configuration checker. You can change any places, any of those places there by uh, opening up the dialog and choosing where those things actually are. So no longer are you constrained to having those things in a particular place. You can have them anywhere in the system. Also, uh, just to demonstrate the extended attributes. Uh, decomposition level you can see here because this one's a colour if we choose that we get a, a, a colour picker depending on what colour we pick gives us a value inside uh, the, a background colour that we actually pick we choose a font and open up that there's a font we can choose what sort of font we want and it updates the other font, size and, font and style fields the boolean ones are rendered as checkboxes these things are in, in, enumerated fields, so we can choose from the enumeration. Things that are um, set up to be text, which will open up a text uh, dialog where you can type in any amount of text. And you can see the user defined ones there. Well. So that's at the decomposition level. The uh, task level. Sorry, at the, very, the variable level here, if we want to uh, choose one there, and we go to these extended attributes, you can see there's a lot more there. So you can change the uh, the uh, validation message if, if it doesn't validate. Background colours there. You can choose whether you want to black it out or not. In other words, you want to show the field but have it blacked out so that the user can't read the value the value in it, like like a uh, Freedom of information type form. Um, here's some of the uh, schema uh, restriction facets, fraction this. For example, you can hide the whole, whole thing. Hide if, you can give it an X query and it will hide that field if the X query evaluates the true. You can put images above and below and justify the field. You can change its length. You can put uh, horizontal lines above and below each, each field make each field optional or read only or you can skip validation if you like so when uh, the task completes the value that's assigned to it won't won't be checked against its data type that's, you can change a text field into a text area so that instead of a single line you have a multi-line text area on the form you can change the tooltips etc etc And uh, that's about it.